share with you today a little bit about how the Irish Dairy Board views the future. Uh, we'll look firstly at the agri-food exports and the global trends, spend some time then on our business and the changes that are going on at this point in time within that business, and there are many. Share with you some of our strategies and plans for emerging markets, and then give a snapshot of how we would look in and see the future. Maybe to contextualize this, let's look in at dairy products and how important they are to the island of Ireland, where just under 30% of all of Irish food and drinks exports from last year came from the dairy industry. And if you look at that in the context of, of a, a country that exports just under 8 billion euro. I think what's, what's interesting here is to look in at how that's happening. Um, we see that 44% of all Irish food and drink exports went to the UK, which is, is and will remain our very important trading partner. 22% went to the rest of the world and 34% to the rest of EU. If we move on from there and look maybe at the GDP growth, and obviously after the very difficult times the world economy had in eight and nine, uh, the global economy has now returned to growth. And global GDP forecast for 2011 is at a healthy 4.3%. This is a very interesting slide I think that I'd like to spend a minute on with you. Uh, we speak about population growth, and we speak about a different world facing us all, not just in 2020, but out into 2050. And if the population in 2011 is predicted to be just under 7 billion, uh, the predictions for 2050 at 9 billion means that there will be 1 billion new emerging consumers by 2020. And I suppose as, as marketeers out of the island of Ireland, whether we're in um, uh, dairy or we're in beef or we're in food and drink of any sort, we have to get a piece of that pie. Uh, because that's a significant new customer base that is emerging for all of us. In terms of the medium-term outlook, I'd like us to zone in a little bit on maybe the, the part of that slide up there where you have the, let's call them the, the developed countries which are exhibiting growth, our predicted growth to 2014 of approximately 1%. And inside there we have Europe, Japan, Australia. But what's more interesting is if you come down that slide and you look in at countries uh, and, and regions like Southeast Asia, India, Middle East, Africa, and China, the growth rates that they're predicting for the future are nearly three and a half times greater than where the, um, the developed countries that we would be used to doing business with in Ireland. And I suppose that creates a great challenge and a great opportunity for all of us uh, as to how we move that forward in the next period of time. In terms of our business, or our dairy business, we have two business platforms. Uh, Consumer Foods, which in includes the Kerrygold brand that, that I hope you, you see as you travel around the world. Uh, that brand is now on sale in 50 countries. And in 27 of those markets, Kerrygold, at this point in time, is, is in the top three imported brands. And in a number of those markets, is, is heading for number one leadership position. We also have a dairy trading and ingredients business. Uh, and we are Ireland's largest exporter of dairy ingredients at this point in time. A lot of blue chip customers built up down through the years, uh, and we've seven of the top 10 multinational food companies doing business with that division of the Irish Dairy Board. Obviously, we need to do an awful lot more with them as we look out, and that's some of the changes, I suppose, that we're coming to. In terms of export destinations for us, uh, it's an interesting comparison with the total Irish picture. Uh, because if you remember back to the slide, in Ireland, 31% uh, of our business goes to Britain, very important and growing trading partner. But for Ireland, Inc., it's 44%. And then we have the opposite in terms of the rest of Europe, where we do 47% of our turnover and that compares with 34% for all other Irish agri and food exports. But I suppose the worrying statistic, or maybe the one that we all need to focus our minds on, is the rest of the world, uh, where there's only 22% of everything that the Irish Dairy Board does currently in that market. We saw some growth in 2010, 
But in an industry that's predicting a lot more growth, that's not going to be enough. I suppose the changing dynamic that's going on in our business in trying to plan for that is firstly the one of recognition that we need to make changes and that we need to move the dial a little bit from where we are today. 78%, uh, uh, just under 80%, uh, is within the EU. And while the EU will still, and in all of the future plans, remain very important to us, the future arena for us, and as we go through our strategic planning process and discussions with our board, it is becoming very clear to us that to be able to properly uh, distribute, market, and sell Irish dairy, we will have to significantly increase our presence and our sales into the emerging markets. And we've targeted ourselves as a management team to move that from 22% today to between 30 and 35% at the end of our planning process. I wanted to share with you this morning uh, what are the menu of choices that we have as we look in to emerging markets. And maybe some of these choices are available to all of us irrespective of what industry we represent. The simplest one and the one that we have done, I suppose, most often is to start off by opening the representative office in the, the country of choice, investing in local talent and committing resources to get on that journey. Number two tends to happen basically on setting up a presence within the market uh, with agents or distributors, in many instances both, and building in market distribution network from there. Third and very important thing is to imply local salespeople. And obviously the emphasis on local, there is, there is only so much we can do out of Dublin as we travel around the world, but we need very strong capability in market that understands the local consumer, the local culture, and the local needs. In the next two, we've seen a lot of good work done by a number of companies in Ireland, even in the dairy space, such as Glanbia, who have built very positive strategic alliances and joint ventures in countries around the world as they build their footprint and grow. And that's a natural next step as we're inside in these markets. And finally, the final two, I suppose, is where you place the bigger bet and you become more ambitious and you take on more risk, hopefully more reward, is where we will build or acquire facilities that can allow us to add value locally within the market and to do further processing. And obviously the final one and one that we're spending a lot of time working on and trying to make sure that we get this right is to select strategic or suitable acquisitions in market that will take us forward in a, in a fairly significant way. If I can look with you into our consumer foods business, we would see the growth drivers down on the left around product, urbanization, value, and the globalization of brands. And we're fortunate in the, in the dairy industry to have uh, the Kerrygold brand and some other smaller brands that are very valuable. Uh, our consumer food strategy is to focus on, on the market insight because it is very clear to us as we travel around the world with Irish dairy, whether it be cheese, butter, powder, that those products have to be adapted changed and modified in a very significant way to cope with the local diets and the local requirements of consumers in different parts of the world. And the further we move away from Western Europe and the UK, the more those changes need to be brought to bear. Innovation in NPD we see as a clear footprint for the future. It's interesting that there are a number of speakers here today covering that topic. We'll, we'll be looking on with great interest because we, we recognize in the, in the dairy industry that we need to do more NPD, we need to invest more in innovation, and we need new products for the future. And relying on the historical dairy products that have, that have worked for us in the past will clearly not be enough in a growing farming industry. Uh, value proposition has to be appropriate to each market, and obviously we're going to have to make investments in talent and distribution, and in secondary processing in market, and obviously leverage our brand strengths. If I can move on to our products, strategy or our, or our strategy for emerging markets from the ingredients and trading side. Uh, a lot of our time has spent historically in the standard product area, uh, basic selling, commodity product. It's still going to be a very important part of our future and we have a lot of competencies, knowledge and experience built up in that. As we move on uh, to develop an added value ingredient strategy, a lot more work is being done around bespoke solutions and product development. A lot of good work in market on business development and on cost engineering, and it takes you into more consultative type selling. And then I suppose the, the dream or the aspiration over time is to move the dial to the specialist applications area, 
where technical applications, strong input from R&D and innovation, very deep uh, technical selling are the hallmarks of success in that area. And we've seen companies in Ireland, such as the Kerry Group, have built fantastic businesses around the world in that specialist applications area and are getting great returns as a result of that. So in the next five slides, what I'd like to cover with you is, is what's happening, what's our strategy physically in action in the market. And we've just picked out five case studies that we'd like to share with you. Sub-Saharan Africa, North Africa, the Middle East, China, and Russia. China and Russia, it's fair to say, are at a very early stage in their development from an Irish dairy board standpoint, but good growth predicted. In Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, in July of last year, we launched Bio Milk, uh, which is a new fortified milk powder uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. We're present today in five countries, um, Congo, uh, Angola, Malawi, Zambia, and the strategy in that market is around branded consumer nutritional products. A lot of in-market research was carried out to understand what it was that the consumers in those regions were looking for and could afford. Marketing and distribution programs were put in place, and I'm pleased to say that we have had a very encouraging start 12 months into it. We have now achieved sales in excess of 10 million euro from a standing start. And obviously Kerry Gold Butter can now be found in a number of the markets around there, and I suppose we have to keep regard when you're in these markets. Um, Angola, as an example, is the largest producer of oil in all of Africa. And obviously, wealth generation will come from that over time. Second one we'd like to look in at is, is Algeria. And I had the, the pleasure of spending uh, almost a week in Algeria about seven weeks ago, uh, looking in at that market. It's the world's largest importer of powder, but it's a very fragmented market. Uh, we've refocused our consumer food strategy last year to further boost our presence within the market. And I suppose the clear definition that people came to, to terms with was that in-market distribution is critical. And without that, you're, you're not going to be a player in that market. So the team have created an in-market sales structure, uh, uh, built a distribution fleet of trucks, and we now have 20 trucks uh, distributing our product around that marketplace in Algeria. And obviously, Algeria is a major market as well for our cheese business from an ingredient standpoint, which is, is used in further processing. The third one is the Middle East. Uh, we have a presence there in both consumer foods and in dairy ingredients. Uh, we have a representative office set up now in Dubai. Um, we have market managers in place for both businesses and starting to get listings and relationships built locally. And moving on to the last two, uh, our exports to China are very small, but they're growing. But we recognize that we need to do a lot more there as that country continues to grow. Uh, we have now appointed in-market sales managers, both for the consumer foods business and for the trading ingredients uh, business. We opened a representative office in Beijing, and that's a base to build from. But it's clear to us that the key for China, for Irish dairy, will be product differentiation. And it's, it's not going to work us bringing the existing range of butters and cheeses to that market because that's not what the consumers in China are having today. So it will require a fairly fundamental look at the products and indeed the brands that we may use to build success in that market. And finally, Russia is at a very emerging stage for us as an emerging market, but it is the largest importer of butter and cheese in the world. And our strategy is, as we have appointed an in-market sales manager based there, uh, they're developing a consumer foods presence in the major urban centers because that's where the population is drifting towards. And we have now achieved listings with a number of the major multiples as a platform to build from. We also have developed recently some ingredient sales and customers as well. But it's a market that as we look into, we have to become much more predominant in. So if I can move and, and to finish up, and I think I've stayed on time, Dennis, uh, to our medium term plans. Uh, for the emerging economies, it's around doing three things very well. Uh, we've got to have great people. We've got to have great people in Dublin, and we've got to have great people in Dublin that will move and base themselves in market and will build teams around them to grow our business. We've got to leverage the brands. We're fortunate to have them. Uh, they are a carrier for everything that we want to do, and they signal the strength that Ireland has. Innovation, we can't underestimate. We cannot take the existing products to those markets without fundamental changes. So as we look out, it'll be a combination of organic growth off of the existing subsidiaries we have in place that are working well, 
investments of capital, and we have to be brave in putting capital into these markets, balancing the risk with the reward, and likewise bringing on bolt-on acquisitions to give us further opportunity to build scale and to grow technology into the future. And finally, what, what do we look in at as the future? We have a very positive outlook for the global food sector, as you'll see from our, our, our slides thus far. We believe that there is an opportunity. Uh, but we think things like trade agreements and government-to-government -government relationships will be very important for us. And we're working very closely with the minister and his department in fixing dates in diaries to physically go to market together and to sell the Irish story and to get support in market for how we can develop a strong export business into our countries of choice. We think emerging markets, as they grow, while they will be risky, uh, there will also be significant reward if we can do it right. We think Ireland is well placed to meet these future food demands. Uh, we, we do have high quality products, they're recognised internationally. Uh, they've been recognised now for nearly 50 years under the Kerry Gold brand. We're supporting it with a green image and rain produced grass with natural product. And obviously it's a, it's a very ambitious vision for us to, to try to put ourselves in a position in a changing business to be able to cope with up to 50% growth that our farmers are predicting from the Food Harvest 2020. But there is a very strong and very genuine commitment from us in the board and from the board that we work with to achieve those plans. So thank you for your time.